we're going to first of all go over to a short video which uh, shows what happens when you take a camera along to a lecture theatre. When recording a lecture, it's important to show up early. It's much better to be an hour early than to be a few seconds late, for obvious reasons. You should have checked the premises ahead of time. If not, it's a good idea to have a look around and have a think about what you're going to do before you start to set up. In this shot, Tim is setting up in a particularly bad location. He's blocking an aisle, but in addition to that, you'll see that the shot that he gets from where his camera is located is a particularly bad one. The lecturer and the screen are in the same shot, and they need different exposures, so one of them is going to look bad. As you can see, there's one other problem with the camera's location. Here Tim is setting up in quite a good position. It is still on an aisle, but it's quite over to one side, so he won't be blocking anything. He has a better view of the lecturer, quite a clear one, which doesn't include the screen. Note that even though he's not blocking the aisle, because he's in an aisle, he's taping the tripod down to make sure that there is no accidents. From this position, Tim can shoot the screen but notice how much better the slides look if you simply import them when you come to edit the finished video. Tim's now running a cable from the camera to a lecture capture system. Since the cable is crossing a place where people are coming and going, it is essential that it be taped down securely. Um, Taking sound for your video from the lectern microphone uh, is very good if you are dealing with a lecturer who stays in one place. However, you'll find if, as many lecturers do, your lecturer tends to walk around a bit, as they get further and further from the lectern, their voice is going to start getting quieter and quieter. You may even find that as they stroll along, their voice is going to get louder as they approach the microphone, and then they're going to go past it, and their voice is going to go down again and it'll be quiet once more. But there is an alternative to using a lectern mic. Uh, now testing sound. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. It's good for me, thanks. If we use a lapel mic, we don't have this problem. The lecturer can wander around as much as they want and the microphone follows them, obviously. Now, in our situation, I'm using a wireless microphone, which is particularly nice, but you could use a lapel mic on a long cable, provided the lecturer keeps that in mind and doesn't walk so far away that they yank something off of the lectern that the microphone is plugged into. After the recording, it's important to make sure you get your microphone back from the lecturer. But that's not all. You want to remove every trace that you have been there in the lecture hall. Hopefully, you'll leave it a better place than when you arrived, and you'll be welcome the next time you have to show up and do a recording.